welcome all of you to the course and uh, we will start uh, with this course with a small uh, remark that the starting point of our course is going to be theory of NP completeness Some basic examples of problems that are NP complete are like I am sure you must have seen 3 sat, satisfiability, 3 coloring, independent set, and many other problems. So, for this course, it is good enough for our purpose that. Uh, we take the following as a definition of NP completeness. It is not formal, but this is something which will be helpful for us as we uh, go forward. Okay? So, basically means a problem P is NP complete, then, then we can say the following. Okay. What we will say? We will say the following. No algorithm, no algorithm for P solves all instances optimally in polynomial time. Okay. Just to make things concrete, uh, let us fix one NP hard problem and let us try to see uh, different aspects of that NP hard problem in this lecture. Okay. So, the problem which we will consider and which will be fundamental and our most basic problem that as we will go along in the course is the problem of vertex cover. So, what is a vertex cover problem? So, the vertex cover problem is as follows. Input is going to be a graph G and an integer K. Okay. And the question is does there exist a set S subset of V G mod S is at low at most K and for every edge u v in edge set of my graph, either u is in s or v is in s. So, for example, let us lay let us look at the following example. Okay. So, in this example, if I look at this red vertices, do they form a vertex cover? No. Why? Because there is an edge here, here is an edge say A and B, edge A B that none of these A and B is one of those red blocks. But if we include A also into our vertex cover, right, then this is a vertex cover because look at any edge, it has at least one end point which is red marked. right? So, colloquially, uh, colloquially the set S is also called, the set S is also called vertex cover. Okay? 
So, for example, for this simple graph that we drew, there is a simple graph that we draw. Okay. The simple graph we draw, actually we can find us, this is following is also a vertex cover. Right? Because now also if you look at any edge, there is at least one end point which is red colored okay? or in the red circle. Okay? So, this is a very fundamental problem and if I try to take this basic definition, what can, what can we say about vertex cover? So, basically we say, we can say, uh, we can take back the statement about NP completeness copy and the, we can say the following. So, there is no algorithm for vertex cover that solves all instances optimally in polynomial time. Meaning, what is, what is a polynomial time for this instance? Meaning, for this there is no algorithm A which takes an instance g comma k, runs in time some v g to the power big O of 1. Okay. So, let us put that remark, what is big O of 1? Big O of 1 will always mean a fixed constant C that does not depend on vertex set of G. Okay. So, for example, what it means there is no algorithm which takes an instance g comma k and in time say v g to the power some c or big O of 1 can tell you whether g has a vertex cover of size at most k or not. Okay? So, we do not expect any such algorithm for an NP hard problem and in particular for vertex cover. Uh, so, what do people do actually? So, to handle these things people actually has to let away, get away from one of the demands which we have that either we can solve the problem all instances or we can solve the problem in polynomial time or we can solve the problem optimally. Okay? So, one classical field is approximation algorithm. Okay? So, let me talk about a bit approximation algorithm. So, in this field, we would still like our algorithms to work in polynomial time, but we are happy with good quality approximation solution. For example, uh, I would say look it is okay I am not able to give you a solution of size at most k, but maybe if there is a solution of size at most k could you produce me a solution of size at most 2 k, 3 k or maybe k square or anything. Okay? So, let us look at one very good example of uh, vertex cover problem, an approximation algorithm for vertex cover that runs in polynomial time. So, here is our algorithm A. What, does, what, are, the, what are its steps? Okay? So, this is on it takes as input g comma k okay? and what it is going to output us? Either it, it is going to output sir, the following, either, either say that G does not have G does not have a vertex cover 
of size at most k. This is one thing that our algorithm can return or returns us a vertex cover of size at most 2 k. Okay. So, this is our algorithm. Okay. So, what is supposed to do? It takes an input g comma k either say that g does not have a vertex cover of size at most k or returns a vertex cover of size at most 2 k. And here is a very simple algorithm. I am sure uh, many of you would have seen this. Okay. So, here is a description of our algorithm. So, what it does? Compute a maximal matching of G. See? M. Okay. Now, sorry. If cardinality of matching is more than K, say no vertex cover of size at most k. Third, else return f equal to vertex set of m, right? The endpoints of edges in m right so just so what is s is basically you look at every edge of my matching take both endpoints okay else return s as vertex cover okay so first thing first okay so now let's prove that this is indeed correct okay so here is our proof okay uh, so, first case what happens? If, uh, if we get matching of size greater than equal to k, so what is matching? Matching is set of pairwise vertex disjoint edges. Okay? So, which means if a vertex appears in the first edge, it does not appear in a, any other edge and so on and so forth. Now, notice what is a vertex cover? Vertex cover is set of vertices that must pick one end point from every edge and in particular, it must pick one end point, right? Every vertex cover, every vertex cover must select one end point slash vertex from each edge of M. Now, since these vertices are these the edges which are the vertices which are involved in the first edge is not part of the second edge and so on and so forth, any vertex cover must pick any vertex intersection of any vertex cover with any matching edge is at least at is at least one and these are disjoint. So, if you the existence of a matching of size strictly greater than k implies the vertex cover that we would wish to construct, this implies that every vertex cover had size greater than strictly greater than k. Right? This implies that when we say that g comma k is a no instance meaning it does not have a vertex cover of size at most k, then this is a correct assertion. Okay. Now, so now look at the second case. So, this is a case when the matching is more than k. Now, look at second case. Now, what is m? m is a maximal matching. 
what is the meaning of that look at any vertices which are involved here which are not part of this here 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 what is the meaning of a maximal matching what is the meaning that m is a maximal matching m is a maximal matching implies no edge from outside can be added to m no edges from outside can be added to m without violating the matching constraint meaning if you look at any edge which is not part of this why we are not able to add it to m because when we add it the problem is this edge intersects with one of the earlier selected matching edges okay so it means every other edge after this is going to be either like this like this or right but we cannot have we cannot have an edge entirely consisting of this red vertices because then we could add this edge to m and get a bigger matching okay so which implies that indeed if i look, take the end points of every matching edge right end points of every matching edge right then it does form a vertex cover and what is its size its size is 2 times cardinal t of m which is 2 times k so notice that we have designed an algorithm and look the running time of this algorithm is polynomial because computing a maximum matching of say m is very simple greedy algorithm you start with an edge then you pick up another edge which is uh then you pick up another edge which is not part of this edge put it so on and so forth you keep doing this until you cannot add any edge. so it's a greedy way of computing a set of edges which is maximal and they are pair by vertex is shown okay and then what was the second step we just computed its size which is which can be done in poly time if it is large you say no of if it is small then you take both the end points and you return it as a vertex cover and what kind of algorithm we wanted we wanted to have an algorithm which wanted to say that either i return that g does not have a vertex cover of size at most k and in that case g should not have a vertex cover of size at most k or we should return a vertex cover of size at most 2k okay so this is a simple algorithm which does uh, let me make it a remark one remark is in order here so what is my remark so the remark is that uh, actually uh people study optimization problem people study optimization problem in approximation algorithms so what i mean by this okay so let's uh, put this remark in red so you actually ask for minimum sized vertex cover of g not there is no k or anything so so the question will be input is g uh output so let's call this minimum vertex cover problem right output uh minimum sized s such that s is a vertex cover okay a minimum size s such that s or in other words 
if you look at the graph g minus s is an independent set there are no edges after we delete the vertices in s okay so this is the this is what it is studied in a classical approximation algorithm that you study an optimization problem that given a problem you would like to find a set satisfying the property of minimum size or maximum size or if there are weights on vertices or edges then you would like to find a set satisfying this property of minimum weight maximum weight depending on the problem uh, so whatever algorithm i stated before uh, you if you forget about the second step and say compute a maximum matching uh, return both of its endpoints then that will constitute a valid factor 2 approximation for minimum vertex cover but uh, uh, but for the for this particular course uh, we will only talk about uh, approximation with respect to decision version of the problem and approximation with respect to decision version of the problem for vertex cover is as follows as stated so you compute a maximal matching if the size is large you return no if size is small you take both endpoints and return that as a particular vertex cover okay so so let's go back to our uh, our theory that a problem p is np complete then we said that for vertex cover we can say hey uh, no algorithm for vertex cover solves all instances optimally in polynomial time right so we went to the world of approximation algorithm when we relax the notion of optimality then this leads to the world of approximation algorithm right so we do not like to but now what about relaxing the constraints of polynomial time and this is what uh, will be one of the main uh, theme this is the main theme of this course that we are going to rather going to uh, allow relaxation in optimality we are going to relax optimality like we are going to relax the con con condition that i demand you to have an algorithm in polynomial time so now let's go back to the vertex covered okay so let's make a line and now we are going to look at the notion of relaxing the polynomial time okay so we are going to relax the polynomial time so let's ask ourselves uh, what would be an algorithm for a vertex cover so let's recall the problem vertex cover problem if okay so let's we can recall it okay so input is a graph g and integer k and we would like to know whether there is a set s of size at most k such that if i delete it every edge if i delete this vertex set then the remaining graph is an independent set or in other words we are looking for a set s such that every edge has at least one end point in this set okay so now look at this vertex cover problem and we would say look uh, what would be a simple algorithm or a brute force algorithm to check whether graph contains a vertex cover of size at most k or not so here is one algorithm that i could think of is uh, okay so here is an algorithm enumerate every vertex subset of size k of vg okay in second enumerate every vertex subset s of vg of vertex subset enumerate every vertex s of size k of vg second check 
if g minus s is an independent set independent set or in other word check other word check if s is a vertex cover ok. So, here is a very nice algorithm right. So, what is the running time of this algorithm? So, since we are going to suppose uh, like so from now onwards let us uh, let us take the following notations vertex set of g size of the vertex set of g will be always n size of h set of g will always be m. So, the the graph we will consider will have n vertices and m edges ok. So, now how many vertex subsets of size at most k of v g is? Well, that is n choose k number of k sized subsets of vertex sets of g and now for each I need to check whether g minus s is an independent set. So, basically I go over each edge and check whether s contains one of these vertices or not and this we can do it in polynomial time. So, sum n to the power big of 1 ok. Recall n to the power big of 1 is a constant which is like 2, 3 and in our case at most 2 uh, or 3 maybe uh, and that is it right. It does not depend on the k. So, this is one algorithm right. So, uh, which we can think of this as like a kind of brute force right because uh, this is not a this is not a an algorithm which is doing anything more than the most obvious thing is to try all possible answers and check if one of these answers is what we need or so for our possible answers for a particular set of size at most k or k and so you enumerated all these sets of size k and then you checked whether uh, whether that set forms an independence that forms a vertex cover or not by checking whether the complement g minus s is an independent set or not ok. So, uh, that should be ok. So, ok. So, that uh, so now let me try to give you a another algorithm which says let us see which might be which might be slightly better. So, my algorithm is going to uh, going to start with. So, it is inspired by this algorithm, but rather than enumerating all possible k size subsets of uh, the whole graph or the whole vertex set, we would like to do it slightly selectively. So, what is my algorithm? So, I am going to first run this factor 2 algorithm, factor 2 approximation algorithm A ok. And so, an alternate algorithm I am trying to make for vertex cover is the following ok. Alternate algorithm ok. First, compute a factor 2 approximation to vertex cover. Okay. So, remember the this algorithm can have two answers no and yes. No means you also return no, say return no, no vertex cover of size at most k. Yes means you have a f of size 2k. Okay. So, this is an interesting case for us. So, rather than writing this algorithm ok, let us try to understand what this means ok. So, my algorithm so look picture by here is my set s and here is my g minus s there are no edges here this is an independent set ok. So, basically all edges are going across or they are contained inside graph induced on this. So, I ask myself the following question. Uh, suppose suppose there is vertex cover 
phi of size say at most k such that g minus s is a vertex cover or g minus s is an independent set. Now, I ask myself ok fine. So, what like I ask myself look at that c that c might intersect s it might not intersect s ok. Now, I want to I would like to guess what does it intersect from s ok. So, the first step is would like to guess or know what c intersects with s okay and that's how many such choices are there so would like to guess so I, which basically means that we will try all possible sets okay so what is the meaning of this we'll say okay let us z be c intersection s ok or rather yeah rather let us say yes ok this is my c intersection. How many possible choices of c intersection s is? Well, suppose it is intersection could be empty well right. So, let us I will guess the cardinality of this ok. So, it is going to be at most i equal to 0 to k mod s choose i which basically means well I am asked I am checking whether c intersection s is 0, 1, 2, but it could be up to k. So, I will try all possible subset as potential this. So, this is it. So, the possible choices of y is this uh, ok. So, once we have guessed in y let us try to run the algorithm we will try to make an algorithm in polynomial time. So, what we have done? So, we have done is following let us cut this Okay. Now, this is my y. So, how does y look like? So, let us color that y with red. So, suppose this is my y, this is my y. this is my y. Then what do I know? So, if y is this remaining vertices of s is not part of n ok great. So, basically s minus y is not part of s, but this also gives an useful information to us right because notice that if s minus y is not part of a vertex cover, then all the edges which are incident to s minus 1, s minus y, the, there are only two choices for each edge which s minus y covers, right. Since that end point, look at an edge here, look at, let us look at an edge here, look at an edge here. If this vertex is not part of my C, then this vertex must be part of my C. So, basically given an y you consider potential vertex cover C as y cup neighborhood of s minus y 
cup let's call this set i independent set that's it so these are your potential you have to and notice that because every edge was covered by s so now this set covers every edge which is covered by s minus y y covers every other edge which implies that c is actually a potential vertex cover actually a vertex cover okay so all i need to check is c at most k or not right so if so we we so the algorithm is very simple okay so in the second step what it does uh, uh, for so the second step of my algorithm is for every y subset of s of size at most k check if y union n s minus y intersection i is a vertex cover of size at most k if i succeed in any of for any y then i do know there exists a vertex cover of size at most k and since this is an exhaustive because we tried every possible intersection including empty if none succeeds then we know there is no vertex cover of size at most k so this algorithm is correct but what is the running time of this algorithm so the running time of this algorithm is notice in the first step is like n to the power big o of 1 given this in the second step we have got a set of size at most 2k and so the second step is like for each of the choices i equal to 0 to at most 2k uh, this is upper bounded by 2k choose i times some n to the power big of 1 to test and this is nothing but if you uh, n to the power big of 1 plus by binomial I can write down this is nothing but uh, at most uh, what 2 to the power 2k right so just by binomial because summation i equal to 0 to n n choose i is 2 power n so 2k takes the role of n and then you are done okay so th th so we have actually made an algorithm which runs in time 4 to the power k n to the power big of 1 now notice something good about this algorithm so what is good about this algorithm so something very good about this algorithm is as follows that we had one algorithm which ran in time let's get that n choose k n to the power big of 1 and we have another algorithm which is 4 to the power k times n to the power big of 1 so this algorithm is roughly you can say n to the power k plus big of 1 right so i mean this algorithm is is like bad just for if the number of vertex in the graph is greater than or equal to 4 but another way of looking at this let's set the parameter set the number k equal to say log n then this algorithm is actually n to the power big of 1 so up to k equal to log n we can test with this new algorithm whether there is a vertex cover of size at most k right at most log n in polynomial time why because what is 4 to the power log n n to the power big of 1 this is nothing but n square times n to the power big of 1 which is n to the power big but this algorithm even here is going to run in time n to the power big o of log n so what so if you are looking for a vertex cover of size at most k this brute force algorithm will run in quasi polynomial time but this nice algorithm will run in uh, yeah so this nice algorithm will run in polynomial time okay now uh, this brings us to the uh, following concept or the following idea okay which is a very very important and key and central to our concept so what is our basic important definition that we are so basically what happened here is that we actually designed an algorithm which was running in time f of solution size times n to the power 
big O phone. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So basically, these are the kind of algorithms that we would like to design. So the kind of problems we would be interested in. Okay. So for example, uh, if you think of a input for a vertex cover, we had G, K, we had a question, does G has a vertex cover of size at most K, right? Does G has a vertex cover of size at most K? Well, now I can think of this number K as a parameter, okay? What is the meaning of this is like, okay? So now I would like to say that look, yes, we do know that the algorithm cannot be solved in polynomial time, but is it possible to design an algorithm whose running time can be bounded by some function which is just depends on the parameter and the, and the, and the dependence on the input side it is still polynomial. So we have now it's a two variable running time of an algorithm. One which is one a function which is allowed to be an exponential in K but there is another part of the function which is the dependence on the input side which is polynomial as it was classically in the world of a uh, polynomial time algorithm. right? So in particular what happens is that Okay, uh, so the kind of algorithm we are going to design will have for a problem. Okay, okay. So the problem generally will be so classically. Notice that so k is our part of our input. So classically, problem used to be called or the language, whatever you would like to call it, L used to be subset of sigma star. But the world we will be living in, our problem. Uh, will have will be a subset of sigma star cross natural number okay so for example for vertex cover what is our input g comma k so g belongs to our sigma star and n k is a natural number that it will be okay so this is one thing to remember and so in classical world classical world so here is a classical world let's write it classical and the new world or say parameterized world okay classical world parameterized world okay so the classical world input is given by instance and a question okay in the parameterized world you have to give me an instance which is like g comma k example a question but also you need to tell me a parameter in the sense because this is what dictates me that given a problem what kind of algorithm we are looking for so i am looking for an algorithm whose running time can be bounded by function of parameter only okay so this brings to us to the notion of what is called uh, most important notion of in this course we'll say we will say a problem pi is fixed parameter fractable or fpt uh, with respect to parameter uh, with respect to parameter okay if there is an algorithm running in time f of parameter times n to the power big of 1. Here, 
f only depends on parameter okay so what did we saw so we, i will define it more formally uh, after 5 minutes okay but le okay depends on the parameter so what we saw so if you saw that vertex covered is fixed parameter tractable with respect to parameter k or solution size okay now something which uh, i think uh, before i go further let me uh, formally define uh, the notion of i would guess that i should formally define the notion of uh, fpt uh, but uh, yeah uh, but uh, maybe uh, we'll get to that at the right time maybe in the next lecture uh, we will define formally what fpt means uh, but for now uh, let's just uh, live with this definition that the in, there will be an input there will be a parameter and uh, and we would like to design an algorithm where the running time dependence on parameter could be any function and uh, n to the power big o1 is the dependence on the input side okay now what are we going to do in this course so in this course we are going to study various problems okay now design fpt algorithm for the problems for the problem okay that's our main goal so we will learn techniques to design techniques to design uh fpt algorithms okay and uh, that's one thing we'll do but there's a more classically there are there are problems for which there is no fpt algorithm so we will also see methods to design hardness in this world in this world okay and if you notice we are always saying the problem is fixed parameter tractable with respect to parameter something so for the same problem there could be several parameter and a problem may be fpt with respect to one parameter but may not be fpt with respect to another parameter okay so in the next lecture uh, we will define what fpt means formally and uh, define and give you an example of a problem where uh, with respect to one parameter we do not expect to have a such an algorithm but with respect to some other parameter we do expect such an algorithm and i will show you one such algorithm okay so with that uh, let's conclude the first part of our introduction where we have defined the notion defined the notion of fixed parameter tractable algorithm which it basically means designing an algorithm where the dependence on the parameter could be exponential but the dependence on the input size is polynomial like purely polynomial which does not depends on the parameter it's just old classical polynomial time algorithm okay thanks Thank you.